Hey guys, Eric here, Nomadic Fanatic. I don't think I've ever gone four days without making a video. That should tell you how busy I've been lately. But um, I have tomorrow off until the show opens at night over in Aberdeen. But um, I finally have some free time to myself here. And before I uh, head back to the RV here, I have a craving to go see the kitties at the animal shelter. Maybe the dogs too. We'll see. But uh, yeah, this time I might check in and give them some love. Are you scared? You scary kitty? Oh no, oh, no. you like the loves. I know, oh, that's way exciting, huh? Hey guys, I'm back in the RV now. A night to relax, finally. I'm gonna try anyway. You know, I was just checking my email and I've been getting a lot of emails from people and remember how I said like I'd like to answer some questions, you know, well, um, uh, let's see, David Moon, uh, asked me a question about, uh, well, talking about, you know, being able to choose the RV lifestyle, you know, and, uh, we were kind of talking back and forth about, you know, what, what obstacles there is to not being able to actually take the plunge and be able to move to the RV full time, you know, and, uh, well, I thought I'd tell you guys my, my personal story, you know, I, uh, had been in a relationship for, for nine years, and towards the end of that relationship, well, during that relationship, the last four years of that relationship, uh, we both had been doing a lot of research into the the RV life. We weren't we weren't in a place where we could ever do it as a couple, but you know that kind of goes to show you know we were both thinking about doing it on our on our own. Uh, you know, I found myself looking at Craigslist ads all the time, looking at RVs. I was on YouTube looking at people that live in RVs and vans, just like you're doing right now, watching me. And judging for myself, finding out what I what I could get away with, what I could handle, what I couldn't handle, basically. What ended up happening is uh, in 2010, you know, we were we were we were splitting up. I didn't I didn't I didn't really have a whole lot tying me down because what had happened was, well, I had Jax. Jax was about eight weeks old, just you know, able to be away from his mom when uh, her and I split up, and um, I also lost my job like two days before we broke up and uh, so there you go I mean I lost <laughs> I basically had uh, 30 days left on the house lease we were renting a two-bedroom house and uh, I wasn't gonna continue that lease it just happened so quick like it, it went from a dream like this thing that I was thinking about that would never happen to all of a sudden holy crap every single puzzle piece is in place right now. So by the end of that month, before the 30-day the lease was up, I had bought my first motorhome. Uh, Jax and I moved into a, a 1979 Toyota Dolphin, and we were living on the streets in Aberdeen in the winter. was our first shot at it. That RV had all sorts of problems, though. One of the big ones was the roof. The roof leaked everywhere inside. And up on top, when you look outside, it you know it had divots in it. It, it was sunk in. And you could you could tell inside that, that the wood was you know warped down, so there was lakes of water on top of it, and uh, it was a nightmare. But that's how I got my start. You know, I mean, up until then, I was just like a lot of people that watch my videos, just wondering, is that really even possible? How how do you get to that point where you could live in an RV? Well, that's how I got there anyway. And ever since then, you know, I've been. Uh, trading on Craigslist, mostly through the barter section, but I've had a lot of different types of RVs, so, you know, I, I find something, I trade it, I trade in that RV for something that I consider a little better. Sometimes I'll bet I've probably gotten a bad deal, but but right now I'm in, in the best RV I've ever had in my life. You know, my cat Jax uh, doesn't know any other life besides living in an RV. It's all he can remember is is being on the move all the time, moving every single day in a, in a home, so... You know, um, it's the only life he knows. I think that's why he's a little more comfortable being a traveling cat. 
but then again, him and I have been on this this quest, you know, to discover this RV life together, and it's it's been really fun, actually, you know. But uh, one one thing I wanted to bring up again is that my skylight is leaking again, and uh, up here, right in the corner. Usually, it's when I like move or something, but right in that corner right there is where it drips down. I would say the last two days it's gotten like a half gallon or so. Let's set this back up real quick. Um, yeah, there's been about a, a, a half gallon of water per day that's coming down. And uh, what does that mean? That means it's actually leaking where it was laking around the air conditioner and then going down into the roof, traveling to the lowest point, and then that's where it drops down. So that's really, really bad news really bad news and it really stresses me out um, you know if you look on the roof it, I mean I don't know how you fix that it's not like you could reseal it you know there, there's a there's a problem the air conditioner has pushed has moved the roof down and sunk it down that's why there's a lake around it you know it looks like I'm looking at like having to redo the roof like re re floor in the actual roof and that's uh that's a scary thought to tell you guys the truth it's uh little stressful right now. I'm trying not to think about it. I'm just, uh, I have lots of other stuff going on right now. So the roof thing, um, boy, we'll see. I'm going to get a quote, though. I'm going to find out what it costs. Uh, if, if it costs more than the price of the RV, though, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when, when we get there. One tip I, I will uh, tell you guys about, though, if you're searching for an RV, you know, a used RV, um, <laughs> Stay away from RVs that have flat roofs. Uh, I don't understand this concept. I don't know why they made them like these back in the 70s and 80s and probably even into the 90s. You know, but it doesn't matter how well sealed your roof is. A flat roof is eventually going to sag down. Uh, that's why they started in the 90s to make the, the, the curb, the convex roofs that, uh, you know, basically, you know, it's, a, it's an arch so that the water can't pool anywhere. It just rolls off the sides of the RV. Um, so yeah, don't buy an RV that has a flat roof. It will eliminate so much extra stress in your life. That's not to say you couldn't still develop some kind of leak with a seal. It's a much easier fix. Ajax! Um, so yeah, that's my tip. I want to make one more video tomorrow, uh, and then, uh, another request video. That'll be fun. So, uh, check back in. Jax, want to say hi? He missed me all day. Quit looking at that water. Oh, the other fricked up thing he did was he got down last night, and uh, he must have been trying to whack the raindrops on the, on the bucket, and uh, tipped over the bucket, and I woke up, and there was water everywhere in the kitchen, so the whole bucket idea was useless. Um, hopefully he's not going to do that again, though, right? Right? Oh, okay, say bye-bye. Alright, talk to you guys later.